Hello and welcome to Engineering Sustainable Photographic Processes. This project is supported by the Royal Academy of Engineering and is in collaboration with Dr. Leah Nani Alcantel at the University of Birmingham. In this video, we'll be working with Cathanol Developer and we'll be using that to make prints. This video is designed for school children, so we'll be going through some of the basic terms. So in the photographic process, you use developer, dot and fix. Developer increases the photographic paper's sensitivity to light. Stop neutralizes the developer chemicals before it goes into the fix. Fixer stops the paper being sensitive to light. The paper that we're using today is silver gelatin and it's coated on top of the paper itself. So when you expose the paper to light, anywhere that receives light will go dark and you can use transparencies and negatives and pinhole cameras to expose the paper to different amounts of light. Shot bot developer can be bad for the environment as it pollutes waterways and can harm aquatic organisms. However, plant-based developer can be more environmentally friendly because we're using plant-based matter such as coffee, vitamin C and soda crystals. Today, we'll be using coffee, vitamin C and soda crystals to make our cathanol developer. We'll be using the contact printing process, but you can also use a negative in an enlarger and you can also use a pinhole camera, which is next month's video. In a different way to shopboard developer, cathanol developer can be unpredictable. So if you've never used developer before, start with the shopboard stuff and then move on to the cathanol once you're happy with how the process works. Temperature is a big factor, so I always leave my cathanol developer to rest for a long period of time, whether that's six hours or even overnight. And that makes sure that the developer is really cool. Anytime you heat up a developer, it's gonna make the developer much faster and harder to control. So it's much easier to have a cooler developer that works slowly, and then you can keep pulling your print out of the developer to see if it um, has been developed properly. Your developer may start to expire and if that happens you can increase your paper's exposure to light. So that could mean exposing for longer in the pinhole camera or under the enlarger. You'll also notice that prints often come out as a sepia colour and this can also be experimented with using different developers. So if you use a mint based developer, you might get a green print. And if you used a red wine developer, you might get a red print. So it's really exciting and really an interesting way of experimenting with photography. We'll now cut to the studio where I'm going to show you how to make your cathanol developer. And then we'll head to the dark room and I'll show you how to use your developer. Here are the things that you will need. Coffee, a tray, soda crystals, vitamin C, jugs, water. First, mix 75 grams of soda crystals into 500 milliliters of hot water and you must dissolve these really well. If you do not dissolve these properly, it's a possibility that your developer might not work. So make sure to stir them really well until all of the crystals have gone. It's fine if your liquid looks milky. Once the soda crystals have dissolved, we can now measure out our vitamin C. We're going to need 25 grams of vitamin C powder. I use bodybuilding vitamin C, but you can use the fizzy vitamin C tablets that you find in the supermarket. Now pour the vitamin C into the water. You should notice that it fizzes up quite a lot, but don't worry, this is normal. You should make sure that all of the mixture has been dissolved before moving on to the next step. So make sure to stir it really well before putting in the coffee. 
The next step is to pour out 75 grams of coffee and you can put that into the measuring jug before putting it into your soda crystals and vitamin C mixture. I tend to use instant coffee and this one is from Aldi. So I'm going to pour it into my mixture now. You can use other coffees, but you often need to experiment. And if you're using espresso and coffee grounds and things like that, you'll likely need a higher quantity. So when you pour this in, it's going to froth up, but that's extremely normal. So don't worry if that happens. Make sure to stir really well. Once you've stirred completely, top up with warm water to one litre. Once you've done this, pour into a tray. We'll then leave the mixture to cool for anywhere from six hours to overnight. In the next section, I'll show you what we do in the dark room. You'll need a darkened room and a red light. This should be a genuine dark room safe light. Firstly, put your piece of paper down on a contact printer, cover it with a negative, and then close the contact printer shut. Expose for 30 seconds under the enlarger. Then put your piece of paper into the developer for two minutes. After you've done that, put it into the stop in my case, I use normal water as stop for 30 seconds. Then you put it into the fix. You would do this in the dark, but I've done this in the light for demonstration purposes. Then you will wash for about 10 minutes with resin coated paper and then leave to dry. Thank you for watching this video. This video has been supported by the Royal Academy of Engineering and is in collaboration with Dr. Leah Nani Alkenfell at the University of Birmingham. If you like this video, please subscribe and like and leave a comment if you've made any cap and print.